Creeps. What if the vampire comes back? The flowers are still fresh. Shouldn't we have brought some wooden stakes with us? Or at least garlic? This is a somewhat neglected and dusty hat. The stone is rather unwieldy, so it couldn't be used as a weapon. Someone fell and hit their head on it. Hmm, we're dealing with a very immoderate bloodsucker here. Expensive hat with a few grey hairs stuck to the brim. Someone tore their trousers here. The bleeding wasn't severe, there are just a few drops. The blade is bent from the impact. It's not very polite to just drop in on someone unannounced. The label is illegible. like a set of surgical instruments. One is missing. Do we have any marshmallows? I 
I wonder how even the most destitute always somehow manage to scrape together enough for a drink. Mmm, nicely roasted. Psilocybin mushrooms. These are powerful hallucinogens. This must be the vagrant shelter. Quite homely, if you don't mind sleeping next to the corpses. The brother of the deceased became furious when he caught the anatomist exhuming his sister's body. He killed him with a shovel. The graveyard keeper took to his heels, but didn't get far. He fell, hitting his head on a stone, which rendered him unconscious. With the murderer gone, the reporter who was hiding punctured the neck of the first victim to imitate a bite. But when he did the same to the second victim, he killed an unconscious man. So we have two murders and two murderers, but no vampires. Vampires are not so scary when you have grave robbers and journalists running around. I think I'd prefer good old vampires to this lunacy.
Constable Stark, do you believe in vampires? Eh? What do vampires have to do with anything? Oh, that's exactly what I thought while looking into the murders at the cemetery. The primary suspect is indeed the murderer, but he's not the only one. The reporter, who so easily fooled everyone with his vampire stories, killed the other victim. But why would he do that? He believed the unconscious man to be dead and decided to concoct a thrilling story for his readers. Oh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. I'll have the conniving little scrub taken in immediately. There's only one case left. Don't let me stop you. I hope you haven't had your lunch yet. This one's bad. The hoof prints end in deep furrows. The animal was resisting. What a waste. My gut tells me some dark magic happened here. Multiple bare footprints. I should examine them more closely. Multiple bare footprints. I should examine them more closely.
Someone stumbled on a stone and fell to the ground. The priest said that he came here to stop the ritual. Did you really, Father? The rope is soaked with wine. The goat was torn to pieces. Ugh. Savagery. We have three lusty women engaged in a ritual. They're drinking and dancing when suddenly they hear a noise from the bushes. Their ritual seems to be working. There's a man they can get drunk already. While two of them are busy with the priest, the third one leaves. She is the one who stole the goat and brought it to the ritual. The poor animal smells trouble and charges at the drunken woman with the amphora. Still, he couldn't break free and at the end was brutally torn apart and eaten alive. Well, they attracted the attention of men, the police at least. Mr. Holmes, I have great news. Our recent accomplishments have earned me a promotion. Sergeant Stark. It has a nice ring to it, hasn't it? 
please accept my congratulations, Sergeant. Your part in solving those cases was invaluable. Come, come, Mr. Holmes. Your part was just as important. Not without my guidance, of course, but you did an excellent job. Anyway, I'll be moving back to the office space. My days at this blasted desk are almost over. I won't be scapegoated now. Good for you, I suppose. Uh, speaking of scapegoats, I've solved the last case on the board. The goat was stolen by the lady in the blackbird mask. As if that makes any difference, judging by the atrocity I witnessed at the crime scene. Yes, I heard about that one. The things women get up to these days. Ugh. Well, I'm glad to have been of service. Now I have other matters to attend to. Uh, Mr. Holmes, if I may be so bold as to make one last request. Do you remember that I told you that our chief inspector has been missing for a few months now? My current task is to establish his fate. I've tried to make sense of his last case, but it's a convoluted mess. I would really appreciate your help. Fine. You have me intrigued. Thank you awfully, Mr. Holmes. Tell me everything you know. Well, I don't know much. Just that it's connected to a gang called the Hive. Placido has been after their leader, the Hive Master, for years. But otherwise, I can't make head nor tail of it. Here, take the key to Placido's office. You might find some leads in there. So is it Chief Inspector Placido who has vanished? From what I've gathered, he was a good detective. Ain't that the truth? He was solving cases like shelling peas. Without him, things have gone downhill. He was a crotchety sort, always grumbling, fussing, taking his snuff by the handful, but I, for one, miss the old boy. Very well. I'll see what I can find out. One thing is certain. It's a dangerous business. Be careful, Mr. Holmes.